Next on the CS50, we're going to talk about the low frequency oscillator. This section here, which they call the sub oscillator, which as you might know, if you have any experience with synthesizers, is kind of a misnomer because sub oscillator came to be known as a division of an oscillator which added bass. In this case, the sub oscillator is the low frequency oscillator and it's very extensive and excellent for live performance. So I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, um, first, Let's go to the VCO. By turning this up, you direct whatever waveform you've chosen at the speed you've chosen to the oscillator's pitch, the pitch of all of the oscillators. It is not a massive effect compared to some other synthesizers, but you can definitely hear that the pitch of the oscillators is being modulated by the low frequency oscillator. And you can speed it up. And here's the first point where we get to the fact that the low frequency oscillator on the Yamaha CS50 goes into the audio range. So it's actually an oscillator as well as a low frequency oscillator. And it causes you to be able to get, again, lots of interesting effects, lots of fattening effects. Like right now, you may not here, you're probably hearing it as a saturation or distortion, but the LFO is going fast enough that it is modulating the speed of the pitch in the oscillator in the, in the audio range. So when I bring it out, you can hear that it loses sort of that, uh, that fuzz. But that is another way to take care of the fact that we only have one layer of oscillators. We also, well, and also you have different waveforms to choose. That is the sawtooth wave. Then we have an inverted sawtooth wave. Then we have a square wave. And then noise, which is where noise is being used to control the pitch of the oscillators. And it gets this really, well, you can hear it. It sounds a little bit like noise added to the output of the oscillators, but the actual pitch of the oscillators is being modulated. So if you back that off, it can add a nice variation to your oscillator sound. So there's that, and then we can do all of these same things to the filter. There is a sine wave applied to the filter. You can hear the audio range modulation affecting the filter cutout point. And you can back that off. So then you have an audio range oscillator modulating the filter cutoff point. Now this is how so many great sounds are created with, for example, the ARP 2600 and the Moog Mini Moog, is you have the ability to direct the output of an audio range oscillator to the filter. And it's part of the reason that these synthesizers are considered fat. It's because it adds a, satur a saturation to the tone that is very desirable and makes it sound, you know, like, tube fuzz, well, as, as much as it could, but it does give it a full sound. And then you have the different waveforms to choose from as well. Sawtooth, inverted sawtooth, square. 
And with these controls over here, right where your mod wheels would be, um, you have the ability to make real time changes that sound really cool. Then of course noise, which is a little more extensive, but you can back it off. Adds the sizzle to the filter. And you can direct these things to the amp, which is something that is so frequently missing from vintage analog synthesizers is the ability to modulate the amp with the LFO. It's definitely something we want to do. That's how we would create tremolo. And of course we have control over speed. And then we get into a sort of pseudo ring modulator sound, giving it a distortion you might desire. And we have the different waveforms, of course. distorts it almost out of recognition. In addition to these low frequency oscillator modulations, you also have control over sustain should you want to change the sustain of the sound that you're playing with. So if you have a sound that has a short sustain, And in the midst of your the piece or song or whatever you're playing, you want it to have a longer sustain, you can add that down here. And you have two different types of sustain. You have this kind, and then there is the second kind. which both of them gives different priority to the notes that are sustained. Sustain 2 restarts everything and then holds it after you've stopped. Sustain 1 robs from the previously played oscillators. And both of them have a very distinctly different sound which lead to even further timbral variation. Sustain 2 makes it sound like a mono mode, which is really cool because then you can add in the portamento, which is really cool for a polyphonic analog to have. And in that way, you get sort of a monophonic sound. which is pretty cool. Lastly, you have, uh, we not only have portamento, you also have glissando. Now the glissando effect, oh, I was just playing the glissando effect. The glissando effect, as you might have just noticed, um, is, sounds pretty much like the, portamento effect, except for when you get it really long. Listen to what happens. The glisten, glissando effect goes by half steps. As opposed to the portamento, which just is pure voltage.
Glissando has a metric division, a sort of quantizing that breaks it down into half steps. And that is the LFO section.